Hey guys, welcome to Six Voices, a brand new Six Happening podcast. So far, we've just been displaying our writing on our blog. Here, we'll be discussing various topics regarding the largest city in Canada and showcasing our unique personalities. We look forward to bringing listeners our viewpoints on all topics surrounding the Six. At times, there will be guest speakers as well, so be sure to tune into each episode whenever possible. Looking forward to bringing you guys nothing but the best Six Happening content for years to come. Hey guys, welcome back to another Six Happening episode. This is episode 7, and we have another guest, uh, Ivan. How you doing, buddy? Hey, good, man. Good. All is good. And Vic, for How back to another episode. Oh, I'm, I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm here chilling, man. Awesome. Nice to have you guys on. So, how has your, how has your guys' week been? Pretty good, pretty good, man. Nice full week. Yeah, same here, man. Nice, nice full week. Lots of lots of relaxing, lots of sunshine outside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it's about, right? Getting that uh, vitamin D from the sun. Exactly, man. Exactly. <laughs> so, what do you guys think of the DMX rap of dying, guys? That's uh, pretty sad, right? He's very was a very iconic. Was very like had a lot of interesting songs and basically grew up on that guy right oh for sure for sure man that was i was so shocked when i heard it man because i remember him all the way back from the rough riders anthem you know it's dark and hell is hot that kind of thing like he he changed the landscape you know back when they were all like flossing with the shiny suits and shit you know like like puff daddy and all them he was there man he was doing the opposite yeah, uh, exactly. I was about to say the same thing. Like, Rough Riders Anthem was, like, the anthem. I remember just, like, basically it was, like, one of those, like, club things. You go in there, that's, like, you hear that and you're ready. Like, it's a good, like, transition into the next hip-hop song, right? And yeah. everybody, there was nobody that was just, like, still when that came on. No, that was a lot of energy, man. Lots of energy in that song. Yeah. I mean, you busted a move to that before or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might have a couple of times. <laughs> It was good, though. That, that was one of the first songs I, I heard, like, going out. Another thing I found interesting was he, like, you know how that time, around that time, they had the Tupac sound, the Biggie sound, and he kind of, like, changed it. He made it his own style, right? And it was a little different, like, from that. That kind of style. And he was, uh, he was East Coast, if I'm not mistaken, right, Vic? Oh, yeah, for sure. The song that I remember was, uh, X Gonna Give It To You. That was another one. That was a big one. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was that was yeah. A lot. There was that one, there was Damien, like, jeez, good stuff, man. Party? Up in here? Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's interesting, right? The thing is, he had a sound, right? Like, a sound like, that was unmistakable. It was kind of unique, right? So, you knew when he came on, it was him. Oh, for sure, man. Whether it was, like, was the, like the gravelly voice or the barking, you knew it was DMX, man. Yeah, it was just kind of, like, full of energy. It was raw. And he had, like, a sense of humor, like, too. Like, he would kind of diss people, but it would kind of be funny when you hear it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, like, part of the lyrics. Like, you just, like, yeah. throwing the diss. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, he died too young, though. Like, he was, like, just... Yeah. Like, yeah, I heard that, too, man. He was just, like, 50. If we're being honest, at 50, you still got a good 30 years, if anything, left. If not more. <laughs> you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So it's like, it's like, come on, you know? But... Now, I, I, what I was hearing was that, like, somebody sold them tainted drugs. I don't know if that's what really what it was, but it's kind of sad, right? Yeah, yeah, who knows, man. I heard he had his own issues, too, man, so it could have it could have been anything. Yeah, and it's also, like, I, someone also telling me, like, when you're that kind of, when you're a status, like, these guys are, like, these rappers, it's like, you really got to be careful, like, who's around you and what they're giving you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you got to, like, because somebody's always, like, trying, trying to do you harm, you know? Because of what you have. Yeah, absolutely, man. And like he, he he's had like like he's been involved with drugs like uh, for a long time too. So maybe maybe that stuff caught up to him, right? Because exactly. like, like, he, he died of a heart attack, right? Yeah. Was it a heart attack? Yeah. Uh, what I heard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Like, you have, like, just, just, like, the clubs, right? Just going into the clubs, like, it was a club anthem, right? It's song. <laughs> oh, for sure, man. I remember every time we'd go to, like, a like a place that was doing, like, a like a 90s or 2000s night or whatever, just a bunch of throwbacks, that song comes yeah, on, song and, 
Yeah. Like, like you could not go into that without, like, you know, not hearing one of his songs. So, it was, yeah, it was great. And uh, so, guys, what do you guys think of the, the Raptors, guys, are training Patrick McCaw? But actually, you know what? You know, you guys know Patrick McCaw, right? Imagine? Yeah, actually, he... Didn't he have, like, some uh, injuries? Like, he had, like, some injuries before. But, like, he was a good player, man. I thought he was a really good player. The funny thing is, I knew him before, like, well, I already, like, was familiar with his game from watching him with the Golden State Warriors. I was like, this guy is good with, like, Golden State, right? So it's like, I already knew once the Raptors got him, he was going to be a good contributor. So, I mean, nothing has been normal for the Raptors season this season, let's be honest, you know? (laughs) But, like, you know, to let people go like that, it's kind of sucks, right? Because... You know they had the potential, right? More potential to do more with the team. Yeah, absolutely. Like, he, I think he was a good, good like contributor, right? And I, I think definitely. Like, if it's like, hopefully that you know Raptors will will progress. I mean, without him, I, I don't like. I think it would be hard. He was a good guy, but I know that. Yeah, what do you think, Vic? Well, um, this sounds to me like it was just more like a bit of business like they were trying to maybe they brought him on for a long-term project but like just unexpected changes came up and they're like sorry man you gotta go uh you know they just had to free up some cap space and hopefully now we can do good with all the um draft picks that we've gotten yeah plus uh that new guy is really good like the gary Trent jr he's been putting up a bunch of points like he's been very like he's been epic Epic, right? Yeah, Trent's been killing it, man. He he's been putting up some really good numbers. What? Yeah, there's just that little last part, like something, something the other day. Yeah, Ivan, Ivan, you good? Yeah, yeah, I'm still good. I'm still here. Yeah, no, what I was saying was like, yeah, that guy's been really good, right? So it sucks, but Gary Trent Jr. has been awesome, right? He's been forty points, like he's been. Contributor and like obviously with like Lowry and Bradley getting out of the lineup here and there, it's like it's good to have those guys in, right? At least the new guys contributing. Yeah, yeah. Like I feel like we broke even talent wise because uh, we still got yeah. Boucher. Yeah, that's another guy I was gonna get to. Like it's like we lose people, but we have people stepping up like Boucher, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's filled in the the gap. Like since like you know Serge Ibaka and Marcus all left, I think he's he's helped the team out a lot. Yeah. Overall, though, I think the team has to like, like we, we obviously it's, it's uh, put it this way, it's a mess up season, right? Like they're not playing in Canada, they're playing in the states. Um, the type of things that are happening in the states right now, the great to hear, it's like uh, a little bit of a mess. They don't have our like the support of we the North, the fans, right? So they gotta avoid like you gotta people gotta cheer for them from down there. Like, the people are getting sick down there. It's, it's a mess, right? So whatever little. Up the improvement that people can make in the lineup down there, that's good, you know. And Chris Boucher is going to want to go. He's got a chance to shine. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, been absolutely. super solid, and man. He's a young guy and he's got a lot of potential, and I see good things for the future. Mm-hmm. He's got, he improved on his three ball for sure this year. Yeah, that surprised me, man. I'm like, yo, big man can shoot, okay. <laughs> he keeps break, breaking his record, too. Yeah, he does keep breaking his record, man. It's pretty cool. And, like, honestly, I, th- I feel like he, he, he knew, like, like you said, right? I think, like, got the song, he bought the left. So he's like, okay, I got big shoes to fill, right? So, like, yeah. yeah he took on that challenge. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really proud that he's, like, Canadian, man. I'm really proud that he's Canadian. Yeah, same, I don't man. Know what? You say. what? I'm, I'm <laughs> also really proud he's, he's Canadian, you know? He's. As far as I know, it seems like he's homegrown. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, yeah, Chris Boucher from Montreal, you know? For the three. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I didn't know that. He's from Montreal, eh? Yeah, yeah, he, he was in Mon- he, I think... Yeah, he's from Montreal. I think he was born in Nova Scotia, and then he grew up, like, in Montreal. Oh, man. <laughs> Scotian, yeah. eh? Nice. Ocean. Have you guys yeah, ever been out there? I was surprised. Have you guys ever been out there to Nova Scotia? Mm, uh, not yet. Halifax, but I haven't been anywhere else. How is that? It's pretty good there. I mean, it's not as like urban or developed yeah. like 
like Toronto. I mean, there's still a city, there's still like restaurants, people active there, things to do. Yeah, it's really nice. It, it's a really nice city. Um, but I would love to go to Newfoundland. Newfoundland would be a nice, nice place to go. Actually, my uncle lives there. He moved there. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he got a job there. He used to live here, but he went there and uh, to work in the oil fields there. Like, you know how they they're supposed to be like they pay a lot. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yeah, I didn't know they had oil fields. Yeah, well, I guess it's like like I'm not sure if it's oil fields, but it's like a mine, like oil. You know what I'm saying? So that's where he works. Oh, that's neat. Nick, uh, have you ever you have any experience with like the East Coast, like Nova Scotia, Halifax, Newfoundland? Mm-hmm. Not yet, man. You know, the farthest east I've gone is Scarborough, so I, I got some traveling to do still, man. That's on the bucket list, though, right? It's on the bucket list. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, it's all good. Like, hopefully our records do good, and hopefully, you know what? What I want for these guys is just to come back to Canada, man. That's what we need. Especially when all these, when the you know, virus is under control, right? Here. Oh, man, now, yeah. People, Sorry, what? Now people are scared of us, right? Yeah, that first home game is going to be so lit. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we, we got to go for that. Yep. If we can get tickets, you know they are here. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll get some nice Pride Zone, you know? <laughs> yeah. Box seats. <laughs> yeah, man, shoe box. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ivan? Does Drake still come to those games? Oh. I mean, like, if they want to open it, reopen, you think he'd come? For sure. As far as I know, as far as I know, from the times I've seen, is he usually comes to big games, or games oh. where it's like uh, some kind of meaning to it. What I mean by that is, like, I remember him going to the Philadelphia versus Toronto game last year, or two years ago, whenever we had fans in there, with, um, whenever, and then in the Philadelphia was Meek Mill, you know, the Philadelphia Raptors? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Drake came for that night, right? To see the the first fil- against Philadelphia, and obviously him and Meek Mill have that rivalry because he's from Philadelphia. Drake's from here, right? And then he came when Golden State was here, when they were good, when they were, you know, against us. And oh yeah, actually, you know, him and uh, <laughs> him and Curry were like having a back and forth. It was actually kind of funny. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah him funny. just heckling the Warriors. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Ambassador for sure, man. Yeah, right? Key to the city. Serious, man. He probably already has them. (laughs) Vic, when you get in those, we have to get that. We have to get on that. Get the keys to the city? Uh, Not yet. Maybe when I'm mayor. feel like it's like one big game of uno man it's just like oh, oh you want to go outside you want to protest plus four weeks and then people are like oh oh we're, we're stuck we're home it's like nope skip a turn you can't go outside <laughs> but i mean i really like how the um the police stepped up man because that new whatever law was ridiculous it's just him trying to throw his weight around, and he, he probably, it just seems like he doesn't know the scope of his abilities or powers. <laughs> he thinks he can just do whatever he wants, and again, it was just... That was too heavy-handed. 
Yeah, it was just so inspiring to see all the police forces, like Toronto, Hamilton, Peel region, all of them, all of them came together, man, all the way from Niagara. Yeah, nah, they're like, no, we're not, we're not doing it, we're not going to enforce that. Yeah, yeah, and it's ridiculous, and it's just like now, a lot of people are calling for Ford's head, they're saying, you know, he's, he's not up to it. You know, he's had several chances. It's like, okay, we gave him some time because it's just like the first time around. I I don't think anybody would have done better. But now it's just like, yeah. it's becoming such a politicized thing. Like, I, it, we're behind Chile in terms of vaccination <laughs> rates. We're, we're not even in the top 10 in the whole world for vaccination rates. And, 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 and you know what the worst part is they have vaccines just sitting in the fridge doing nothing. I know it's awful, man. It's like, like what's going on? We have stuff opening up, we have vaccination centers, but then they close like oh we ran out. It's yeah, like, so why did they take bo- online bookings to begin with? Yeah, yeah, I don't know what why they're like rushing in and out right now cuz I know they're doing like hotspot vaccinations for certain um, postal codes, as well as they're kind of staggering it out for the older people. I think they already did, like, 65 plus. They should be around the 50 mark by now. So, I mean, you see, like, the, for me, the whole thing is, like, you know, like you said, Vic, like, first, Doug Ford was, like, he was handling it good, like, in the very beginning, right? And then the more that the year went on, like, in the, the time we are now, now, like, you can see the disconnect between the federal government and the board, and you can see how confused everybody is, right, with, like, the messaging. Somebody says, no, don't do this. Somebody says, yeah, let's do that, you know? So nobody's connected. And then you see our mayor, like, the municipal government, it's like, yeah, whatever they say, you know what I mean? Like, you're just going with whatever they say. And, yeah, that, that law, that recent law where it was, like, with the police, like not like having to stop that was very that wasn't well thought out and also the playground shutting down the playground so like honestly it's it's, they're not thinking about how it's affecting the average person right like person who has kids needs a playground to take the kids to you have to have the kids in the all the time you know what i mean yeah it's, it's it's a mess and and the thing is like like you were saying with the vaccines we order vaccines but we don't get enough from the people right we get like half of what they say they're gonna give us, and they're still at the fifty mark that you were saying. And like, uh, apparently, the the most of the cases are between people twenty and thirty nine, so it's our our age range. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Especially with like the variants, all of that yeah. together, it's like you're young, you're safe. Okay, good for you. You're not safe, right? Yeah, you're not safe. And and it's just like. I know people, they're trying to comply, they're trying to put on their mask, and whatever, whatever, and the weird part is, it's, <laughs> it's the people we're trying to protect, that even if you just walk around the street, you're gonna see, they're not masking, or they're, they're one of those, like, wear below the, the nose mask, right? Wow, hostage. So it's like, a lot of people, some of them are just like, you know what, I'm old, I don't give a shit, I'm gonna do what I want. How it happens yeah. really just makes little difference to me, you know? Yeah, yeah. What do you think about that, Simon? Yeah, I think there's a lot of people definitely that's, uh, like, they don't really care about the the masking rules. And like Vic said, you know, they, like, they're all, like, okay, who cares? Like, and, uh, I mean, I don't think it's a good thing, right? Like, people should try to wear the masks as, as much as possible if they can. And uh, like with this vaccine, I hope I hope people will will also get that too, because that's kind of the key or one of the factors to kind of reduce reduce the spread too, right? Um, it's not like you get a vaccine and inst- everything instantly will become okay. Um, like it takes time to build that immunity between the shots. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and like, and I I don't know if it's something that was born here or something we kind of learned from the states. But there's a lot of people that have the the vaccine hesitancy. They're like, oh, I don't trust it. I don't know. They're still developing it. it it's, it's just turning into such a 
sociopolitical thing, you know, like whoever doesn't take it, yes. what if they end up, you know what, they can't work because they say, you know, you have no shot, you don't work. Right. And that that's what I hear a lot of that, that people are concerned about happening down the line. And and another another big thing I've noticed is what I see on the streets day to day is very different from what's on like CP24 or or CBC or CTV, all those those regular traditional places where it's just like you turn on the news, it's like COVID, COVID, COVID. They even have courses from hospitals so people can go into therapy for COVID fatigue. I don't know about that one. Another thing that, uh, like, I was, I think people are worried about as well, especially like my parents and stuff, because I don't know if your parents all got the vaccine, but my parents did. And um, what's kind of weird is like, okay, for example, my dad got the vaccine and they were telling him like, okay, you might have to wait four or five months for the next vaccine. So, I mean, that doesn't make sense, right? Because so apparently, if you're gonna wait that long for a second vaccine, the first one's gonna be useless. You know what I mean? Well, you're supposed to take it not too long after the other one. I think it's supposed to be a month or something, you know? Not four or five or whatever, right? Yeah, that's too so long. It's kind of it, it does. There's a lot of things that don't make sense. I don't know if you've seen the video I've been or Vic about that lady who was like freaking out about like the Pfizer vaccine mm-hmm. and saying it was like kind of you know, people are going to die from it or something. I see so much of these, like, conspiracy theories that are, like, fear-mongering people, right? Like, don't take this, it's going to kill you, it's going to have black side effects and maybe, you know, start to life. Like, I think people have to do their own research and come to their own conclusions, but you can't just believe somebody like that, you know what I mean? Who knows where they're getting the information and what kind of vendetta they have against them that, you know, if they're talking like that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a hell of a choice. It's like, you either... <clears throat> get these side effects that you think you're going to have or you can have permanent lung damage, right? Because, <laughs> like, even young or old people that have gone to the hospital getting doing the whole thing with the intubator and whatever, it's like, yeah, they say they're better, but there's some people that, that will never be better, right? <clears throat> and it's just like, you know, the, the, the healthcare that we have available isn't the same as, like, say, an athlete gets covid gets time off right and and that's the thing there's a high recovery rate but i think a lot of people have a bit of false confidence in that okay yeah 98 whatever recovery percentage but what about that two percent should we just forget about them should we just be like oh you know whatever like no the idea or the ideal would be to have 100 percent recovery right you can go back to 100 percent of what you were doing so you're not, so you're not like, like leaving someone on the side, you know. And the thing is, people are trying to say like that two percent, one percent, well, it's gonna, you know, get it or whatever. Dude, that's a big number, right? Eh? People are acting like one or two percent is a small number. When you compare it to a population, when you compare it to a population size, it's not a little number. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's yeah, that could be easily in the millions. Exactly. Uh, depending hundreds, on how, thousands. Depending on how big your population is, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh yeah, geez. If you're looking at Ontario alone, it's like, damn. You know that that's a big. That's a big sample piece, man. Yeah, imagine like one percent, two percent of that. That's a lot of people. <laughs> you know. So it's it's a little bit it's, it's crazy, right? But honestly, I think it's not one way or the other, right? Like if you get it, if you get some of it, if you choose to get the vaccine, that's your choice, right? But like, I don't think like. They're not like everyone's not dying from these vaccines, and obviously it's not like there is there is a chance of a side effect for some people. Like I heard with the AstraZeneca one, there's some people getting blood clots or whatever. But like so, it's like it's like in the middle, right? Like obviously there's still new, all this stuff is still new, so you're gonna have stuff where it reacts wrong with people, right? And then I don't know, like some people might even die from it, but the majority is gonna be okay, and it's gonna reduce your risk of getting this, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think it's that minority, you know, like people with like that are that are immunocompromised, people that have like allergies to medicines. There's somebody at my work. He says his doctor told him to not get it because 
he has like some kind of allergy to medicine where he gets anaphylactic. Whoa. Yeah, so it's just like, you know, he's kind of in a pickle. Because all he can do is just take care of himself and, and keep on getting tested. Wow. Yeah, that's that's, that's an unfortunate situation. Yeah, I think he's also uh, waiting out for the Johnson & Johnson. Because uh, it's supposed to be one and done. But I also heard it was that one they were developing to be able to give it to or administer it to children as well as seniors. You, you've gotten, which, uh, which vaccine, did you, uh, you, you've gotten a vaccine, right? You don't have to say that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got the, uh, I got the Pfizer one back in March. And, and my next, huh? How was it for you? Any side effects? Eh, just a sore arm for like two or three days, but. Nothing permanent. Yeah. How are you, Ivan? Have you got anything? No, not yet. No, I'm still, uh, still trying to, uh, See like when I can get it. Would you like? Would you be okay with getting it? Are you hesitant about it, or how do you feel about it? I'd be okay with getting it. It's just the thing is with these like uh, pop-up clinics, they don't like widely advertise like where to get it and stuff. It's confusing. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing, and um, but yeah, I would definitely get it the first chance I I have. Yeah. Same yeah. Here. Like I don't like honestly. It's, I'll be honest with you, it's not even, I'll, I'll get it just to like protect myself, but I'm, I would probably do it more than anything just to, just to like keep my parents and older people around me safe, you know what I'm saying? If anything, because like that's who I care about more not getting it, you know? Because I'm not saying like if I get it, I'm going to recover from good, but like I think, you know, it's always just older people, you get a chance of more safe and stuff like that, and I'd rather protect them, you know? Yeah, same here, right? You, you don't want to give it to somebody who might get it, who might be more vulnerable. Yeah, because like right now, to be honest, I've I've had to kind of distance myself for quite some time because it's like, for me, unfortunately, I'm I'm right front and center for for everything, right? I have high high risk, high exposure to everything that's out there. <clears throat> So all I can do really is just after every shift, I come here, I launder my clothes, shower, stay clean, stay warm, and that's it. Yeah, that's all you can ever do. And and I try to do the same thing too. Like with all my tools, equipment, in the car, I spray everything down, hand sanitizer, Mm -hmm. the wipes. Excellent. I mean, that's, that's good. Both of you are doing a good deal with it. Same here, man. I'm always bringing my hand sanitizer out, washing my hands. I wash my hands so much already that they're getting, like, scarred. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're getting, like, they're getting they're burned. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've had to, like, bust out the fucking moisturizer, man. Because I go through, like, maybe five, six times a day, I'll, 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 I'll be sanitizing, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, buddy, I could, I could do like a sandpaper helmet with my hand. Yeah, <laughs> you can light a match with your hand. Exactly. <laughs> um, what do you guys think of this, uh, like, you know, like, that's one thing, right? The vaccines and COVID and all that stuff and how it's affecting people, but what do you guys think of, like, the racism that's come out of it, you know? And, like, people, like, obviously I heard that, like, you know, like you said, Vic, like, the, there's more drug abuse and stuff with, with groups, right? Like, specifically with black people and, like, Asians being targeted with, like, all this stuff, right? What do you guys, what do you guys feel about that? Oh! It's really unfair, man. Like, especially for Asians, it's, like, it's not their fault. You can't, people can't be blaming one, one group or one race. Yeah. For what's happening, right? It's, it's very, like, ignorant. Exactly. Yeah, I heard about that. There was somebody putting up like a, a theory or positing that um, a lot of drug policies are racist, right? Opium with Asians, yeah. crack cocaine with black people, uh, meth with white people, whatever, whatever, right? So yeah. some, when they were talking about that, it was their way of calling out the government and saying, you know what? You guys need to reconsider what you consider as drugs and why. Because before, it was like all the other stuff is a no-brainer, you know, like like crack, cocaine, heroin, all that stuff, obviously illegal, right? 
Uh, but yeah, yeah, I really do think there's some there there could be something worth exploring in there, all right? Because if that's the case, then like the whole system needs to be redone. Definitely. But the thing is, do you think they would actually do that, or do you think that they're okay with everything that's happening? We've, we've been making that's steps, that's man. Funny. Ever since we legalized cannabis here in Canada, yeah. it, it's been a really big shift. And some people like it, some people don't. You know, some people say, oh, well, I can't go anywhere uh, because everywhere in the city just smells like weed. Everybody is smoking everywhere and, and all that stuff, right? Yeah. And it's been four years already. So it's... <laughs> Yeah, so it's like, you know, it's like, I, if you haven't gotten used to it by now, you'll never. <laughs> yeah, because I, I find there's certain parts in the city where people are still respectable, you know, like, like they won't, like, blow smoke in your face or be smoking right on the main streets. Because um, I feel like there's, for me, there's a time and a place for it, right? I don't like doing it in heavy traffic areas because, you know, there could be kids with strollers and families and all that stuff. And it's just like, yeah, great. I'm enjoying yeah. my freedom. But they, they don't have a say. Right? So I just go someplace else. Exactly. Yeah, you know what? For me, it's more like, you see, the, um, I get it with that. Like, hopefully they keep making strides with that. And the police, like, works with the communities to figure out what's wrong. Because I think that's where it starts, right? Like that. Like the police working with communities and like other like so they're not at, so they understand what the problems are and what why they're being targeted for whatever reason, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I've had a lot of contact with the police myself just from my job and they they've yeah. made strides. They've made strides. Like honestly it'll be like one percent, point five percent where you get that, that officer that's kind of weird or anti social. But other yeah. than that, like everybody's well trained, everybody's culturally aware you know, I still feel like it's it's on that same page of you won't find trouble if you don't cause it. Right? What do you think about all this, Ivan? About the drug problems and stuff? Yeah, I mean, uh, I agree with Vic. I think, like, the police have definitely made some strides. Um, but I think in other places in the U.S., I think they got a long way to go with this type yeah. of thing. They, they got to do more training for the officers and, like, I think the anti, like, not biased, right? They, they got to do a better job at explaining what they're doing, why they're doing it, right? Not just targeting certain groups, certain races and stuff. And they should really work to get public trust. Yeah, 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 the U.S. has a long way to go, man. If their cops are still yeah. pinning people down and then they say to the public, oh, I was afraid, that's a steaming yeah, no. hot pile of excuse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're, yeah. afraid, if you're that afraid, you shouldn't be a cop, bottom line. Yeah. Like, you, you, can't, you can't be that afraid and be a cop when you're dealing with somebody, you know? Come on. Like, I, I respect what they do, man. I respect what they do because yeah. it takes courage to go, go in there, protect people that most of the time are, are, are like total strangers and and put yourself in the line of fire yeah exactly. yeah it's a tough job and, and yeah i do i do respect that the work they do right it's not easy it's not easy the situations they have to be in and, and the stress of reacting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the things that i found i find just that this whole situation i feel like the covid crisis right now it just kind of amplified a lot of problems that have already been there right so for me like there's always been kind of like a hidden racism i'm talking about specifically here in canada right it's not as great as in, in, in the state but it does happen to this from time to time and you'll see like for example like against asians right like obviously they're not like it's not their fault like that we have the virus here and stuff like that but obviously you'll have like people who are prejudiced and blame all Asians because it came from there. Like, I actually had someone telling me, like, this was a while back, like, oh, you know what? All these viruses come from China or Asia, so it's got to be from there. I mean, that's why we blame them. But I'm just like, you do realize there's, like, Asian Canadians that have nothing to do with that, right? Like, so you can't be, like, just saying that kind of, those kind of things. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure they don't want it here as much as you, you know, or more. <laughs> because now they're, they're facing backlash for it. 
And uh, now you see the Ontario government is like basically begging other places to, to send them to send us vaccines because we're behind on the vaccine rollout. They're sending them to send. Uh, they're asking them to send us nurses and doctors, you know, to help with it. And like basically, I heard that Alberta basically said no to sending more nurses here. So that's like you know, I get it in a way. Like they're looking out for themselves, right? But in a way, it's kind of like, we're all Canadians, we should be helping out each other, right? I'm pretty sure Ontarians would help them move the other way around, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it gets complex when it gets to that, you know? Because it's just like, okay, we need nurses. Well, where else can we get them from, right? Because I know there's other yeah. countries uh, like Cuba and China, they're constantly sending out uh, their own nurses and, and stuff like that. To uh, to help. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. What do you think of this? Like, you see, like, for for example, like, there's no like. Have you have you ever experienced any like kind of like racism towards like mean people or not? Not really towards this, right? Uh, not. I mean, with, with coronavirus, no, not not really. There hasn't just, been like, in any general. Kind of... No, I haven't. I haven't like experienced anything. That's good though, man, because you know what, you know, it's like, it's better that you did it, right? So, but like, for those people that did, it's kind of sucks, right? Because you don't, know, like, it's hard to relate if you haven't experienced anything yourself, right? Yeah, it's, it's a really weird sensation, I'll say that much. You know, when, when somebody drops an N-bomb or an S-bomb, you know? Something to write <laughs> Right, it's just like... A lot, a big part of me feels bad for them. Like, yeah, I'll get annoyed and whatever. It's like, you called me what? And, and then after when that's gone, it's just like, oh man, you know what? It's kind of sad. You know, they, they, they still think like that. They still live like that. With like... Yeah, exactly. With yeah, hate, I, just to I, piss I, someone I off. <laughs> when I was younger. Yeah. Oh, really? But, and it, it, it was tough because I grew up mostly like in a in a Portuguese Italian community. Yeah. And I was like a like a one off in the schools, right? So I was often like a target for that. But yeah. as as time went on, I think like with, with more awareness and education going on, I've seen it go down for me personally. That's good though, bro. Because we're supposed to be a, a nation that's very accepting and about multiculturalism, right? Uh, of others, so you don't want to see that kind of thing. You know? Yeah, supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but, I mean it still exists. It still exists. Like, it's still some work to do, but it's a lot better. Yeah. yeah. For sure. What was I gonna say? You're um. So what do you guys think of? Uh, so yesterday, Vic and I went to Kensington Market area, and we checked out a lot of the basically. What you can do now is just walk around and hang out, right? So me and Vic went down there and we checked out some of the places, like just the scenery. We took some nice pictures, some videos, and we checked out the parts down there that they revitalized. It's for me, it was just pretty cool just to see like all of the artwork, all of, like the people living their lives, and like just the different flavors of food they have down there. You know, I can imagine that when things get back to some semblance of normal, that'll be a pretty cool place to go check out once again. Vic. Oh, yeah, we're going to check out some serious food, man. Once shit opens up there. That's a cool place. Mm-hmm. That's a foodie's dream over there. Yes, yes. <laughs> we're going to so get types, empanadas. We're going to get pupusas, man. Oh, I love pupusas. Yes. Do you uh, Latino? Exactly. Hey, we're just going to talk about that. Get a mind. They have really good pupusas there. That place is amazing. I used to miss going there just, just to get... Honestly, I would be so far the other end of the city, and I would just go to... Like, I would go out of my way just to go there to get that. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a trip to to the city, you know? You go to Kensington, you walk around, you get your pupusas. Sad. Yeah, man. Did they did they reopen? Cause I know that they closed. Cause they had like it was it was on fire and burned down. Did they reopen? 
Yeah, yeah, I think they did. They're they're just on like um, what's it called? Alternative hours for now. But I think a lot of it's because of COVID. Because I saw they they opened up their doors again, and there is the owner there, like just on a photo op, just posing in front there. Oh. Because. Um, yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, me too, man. Honestly, it's it's so nice to see. A, a mom and pop shop like that, you know, sticking around for so long, being resilient, you know, like COVID, fire, nope, nope, still here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really impressive. It, most places I've seen that, that burned down, they never opened again. And most of other places closed because of no business. Yeah. But for them, like you said, like, they, like they're still there, that's impressive. Yeah. Honestly, like my, just my favorite thing is with like, with, just with that area in general, in general, it's just like, honestly, like, just, there's so much, like, life in that area, you know what I mean? Like, when sometimes when you go to a place and it's, like, kind of dull and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, you, like, you have no desire to stay there any, you know, any, for any length of time, right? But if you go to that place, you want to stay there, you want to take pictures, you want to check out this food, you want to go to the park and just people watch, you know? You want to meet people, it's like, there's so much cool things to do and see and it's, it just shows you how, how cool it is that in this time, it's still like that, as we saw yesterday. Um, they, they oh, yeah. Morsel, right after. Oh, good vibes all day, all night. You know, we had yeah. a little bit of entertainment, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, cause I, I remember, like, before, it used to be stigmatized. So we had the place where, like, there were shady, shady people get attacked and mugged, dangerous, like, homeless, drug people. But, like, I mean, it's not just that, right? Like, you gotta go there yourself to see what's up. Oh, yeah. It like, was a place full of life. A lot of things like, well, pre-pandemic, it was a place, like, full of life there. They had yeah. uh, the place I used to go to called The Boat. Mm-hmm. And uh, me and my buddies, we would go there. Really good music. Really good vibes. Over there. Yeah. So is that your, like, is that, was that your memory from that place? Basically, I mean, more, more or less going to there? What food places did you try from there? There was a place called El Arepazo, and it was they made really good uh, Venezuelan food. There. Oh yeah. But that was another place I used to go there, like specifically on the food. And they wow, made like yeah. arepas over there, so I, I loved it. They they stuffed it like full of meat, cheese. Um, again, it closed out, but it was one of the go-to places I went to when pre-pandemic. Oh yeah, repas are yeah. the best. Oh man, I I had a Venezuelan buddy. He would make he would hand make them every time there were people over him. Just like yo, these are too good, man. What oh, the hell? <laughs> you're lucky, man. <laughs> yeah, you see, part of it, for me, it's kind of like it's so much different places you can check out. Like you see, even right there, that Venezuelan place. I've been there a different time to Edmonton, and I never heard of that place. So it's like there were some places that like. Also, because of this pandemic, what it makes you realize is just like, when you hear about a place, you should try to go as soon as you can or whenever you can because it might not always be there forever, you know? There's always some new place going down or opening up, right? Because there's actually some places that, from there, that like I heard about and I actually never had a chance to go. And then when I went, obviously you find there's new places and you get excited, right? But you're just like, oh man, I wish I tried that place and it was here, right? For example, there's one place. That was called, I don't know if you guys have been, I think Big Spin, I'm not sure about you guys been, but it's called Cold Tea. And it was like a bar, but like that was like underneath somewhere. Oh, like God, it was like, kind of like, a, like a hidden kind of bar. And like I actually never went there, but I wanted to check it out, you know? Oh, nice. It was kind of like, it was like, kind of like a dive bar, you know? Yeah, yeah, I remember the last time I went, they really fixed it up. Um... It had a real kind of like speak cool. easy kind of vibe, man. Yeah, I actually love those. Those are my favorite kinds of art. So <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of it sucks that you know you never get a chance to check it out. But you know the good thing with that place is it's, it's such a lively area that there's always other things happening right going on there. So we definitely, as the three of us, gotta check that out when everything is good again and like, have like a little bit of food tour, you know. Oh, some pics, video. so nice. down for a food tour, of Kensington. Yes. Let's do that, man. We'll pick, like, what we can do is pick, like, two or three places for the night and just, you know, give our opinions, right? <laughs> yep, yep. Absolutely. Make sure the Yelp reviews are good, you know? <laughs> the reviews are good. <laughs> Believe it or not, 
God, go to the elk group foods really make a difference, eh? Sometimes you'll go there. Like, some people will base up, if they go to a place, you're based on those. Sometimes, yeah. I, like, I, I, I look at that myself, too. And, but, but sometimes I feel like they're not always correct. Like, I can right. say something very negative, but when I go there, it's like, oh, it's not that bad. Yeah, because maybe it was just that person's experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You go, you go off, uh, do you take much stock in the upper room, Vic? Eh, not really, for the same reason, because it's just like, right. am I going to judge an entire restaurant based on one person's bad day? Not really. Yeah, who well, you don't even know, right? Like, you don't know exactly. why they're saying that. <laughs> oh, yeah, even yeah. Google reviews, man. Like, honestly, I got to say Google reviews are a little better. They're they're a little more interactive. Yeah, yeah. A little more authentic. I thought that you just know if a place has anywhere north of four stars, it's probably a good place. Yeah, yeah. Like now they right. they have all these different levels and stuff for like people that review places or whatever. And I didn't even know I'm like a level two guide or something. Because every once in a while I'll like take a picture of a place and I'll post it or I'll, I'll review wherever I've been, right? Yeah. I got over, I had a notification that told me I have over, like, 11,000 views on my reviews. I'm like, what the hell? Wow. Oh, that's amazing. Buddy, you have someone to go to. Go-to guy. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm, <laughs> I'm the Google guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, uh, so I've been, I think, I want to I wanna thank you for coming coming on the episode, you know, it's, it's a pleasure to talk with you, we don't get to talk to you enough, and it'd be nice to have you on more times, and, you know, yeah, we'll, also. We'll, we'll do stuff with you for six happening, too, right, pictures, videos, and uh, let us know when, you can, when you're able to rock that sweater, that six happenings, oh, <laughs> 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 I'll let you know, too, man, <laughs> <laughs> yes, whenever you guys get that transaction going, for, uh... <laughs> I want to reiterate, it's not a drug transaction, this is a six happening transaction. For anyone that's good. Uh, let, let them, let them, you know, let them, let their imagination run wild. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Ivan, I wanted to ask you a question. So, yeah, sure, we, so we have you sometimes, we talk to you a lot, but like, we don't really know like what you do for your main job. What is your main job? What, 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 what do you do for work? And how do you, how do you like it? How do you enjoy it? Can you explain to the viewers and to the uh, for me, so like I I do stuff for the city, and like yeah. I like it's kind of like they're trying to automate all the the trains, the subway trains. Mm. Yeah, so they're trying to make it all like uh, computerized and all that stuff. Uh, because now all the trains are manually driven by the operators, but now uh, actually it's already happening uh, on the majority of line one. Um, but it's, it's pretty much automating the trains, regulating their speed, braking, um, like door opening features, station bypass features. It's, just, it's a very complex system. Wow. So I'm pretty much involved with like the testing and implementing of all those systems and making sure it works. And, so, uh, yeah. No, so I was going to say, sorry. So like, where, where do you... Where do you control all this stuff? Like, where, where is it? Is there, like, a control center? And, like, what exactly is your title? Like, what is your title? Like, the job title? Oh, uh, tester. I'm a tester. Tester? I run okay. tests on the systems. Okay, cool. Like, on the trains, on the signaling equipment, on the... Everything on the track level, the fiber optics, inside the train, the software, all that stuff. Wow. So for that, you have to take, like, was it engineering or something? Or? Yeah, well, my background is more, like, automation and robotics. Okay. That's really cool, man. So you're, you're, you're helping the, the, the subway systems and stuff become more uh, modernized, pretty much. Yeah, modernized, faster, reliable. Like, when, when the whole system is implemented, you'll have, like, a shorter headway between trains. So the yeah. trains will come more often, and... After the pandemic, when people start using the system more, it's going to be less crowded. And the system will be more reliable. No, no signal delays, no, none of that, none of those problems. 
that's awesome. Very so good. You see, Vic, what, you see, Vic, what thing is, when this is moving smooth, when the subway is moving smooth while we're using it, we can thank Ivan for that. Of course, of course. I'll, I'll think of Ivan every time I'm on the TTC. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see his face on like you know when you're on the subway and you don't want to look at somebody who's like make eye contact and you know there's a face of a guy like on those posters and it explains what he did. I want to see Ivan's face on there. <laughs> TTC All Stars, yes. You know what I mean? It's like you may have be having a long day, but this guy is helping you not. He is doing all this, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. I heard that that was why the majority of the time there's like some kind of work every weekend. It's just they're they're slowly, slowly trying to automate the the tracks and trains and all the system in general, right? Yeah. And the big like the biggest problem though, like like before the pandemic in the night we'd only have like maybe one or one and a half hours at most to do the work. Cause, like you gotta wait for all the trains to get out of the line. Then you gotta ask permission to get to the track level. Then you need to set up your work zone. And by the time you get to actually working, you could only do one hour's worth of work. So a lot of the work was so, like, slow and it's condensed. Yeah, condensed. And like now they're trying to take advantage of. Like the ridership and the pandemic to like as you've seen like ten day closures, early closures. They want to do all yeah, yeah, take yeah. advantage and get all the stuff done fast. So so whenever we have a delay, we can thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. But honestly, like in all seriousness, I like thank you very much, man, for the, the work you, you're doing. That's awesome. You're making the city a better place, right? Helping to make the city a better place. Yeah, I wanted to. Toronto deserves it. Yeah, man, it's, it's good work. Helping to make it, basically, you're helping us to like elevate as a city, right? And I think we're already known as like a, one of the top cities, right? But like, if you, you can keep improving all the time, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's that's really good. Rick, do you have any questions for Ivan? Uh. No man, no. I was I was kind of curious about what you do. I figured it had something to do with like engineering, but um, yeah, I'm just mainly glad glad to have a chat, man. It's been a long time since we hung out, virtually or yeah, otherwise. Absolutely, way too long. I was actually telling um, I was actually telling uh, I am not one of you guys. I was telling like we need to get Ivan more like. Ivan, you all of us together on one of these like cottage trips, you know what I'm saying? Like the ones we used to have back in the day. <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be dope, man. Brampton is beautiful. Yeah. They have so many parks up there. Brampton or even just like I'm talking about like Muskoka, you know, like back in the day, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause like it's it's on the way, you know. Like you can go to some places in Brampton, but you, sh- you keep going up and west, and you you hit Caledon and even more beautiful, beautiful places to see, man. Yeah, even stays for a weekend, right? That'll be nice. And uh, and yeah, what was I gonna say as well? So I've been um, one more last question for you. I know you work underground and stuff like that at the control center, right? So like with like with uh, automation, right? Have you ever on? Um, have you ever been on the track level? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm on the track level all the time. Okay. All the time. So on the track level, when when you are, are you scared of running into a rat? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I've, seen so many of, I've seen so many things in tunnels that I, it, it's never bothered me. I'm not used to it. <laughs> is, the tunnel, is the tunnel haunted? That's my question. <laughs> it's such a serious build-up. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. Are there rats? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting that question. <laughs> I see, yeah, because of the fact that we're always on the train, we don't get a chance to experience this stuff, right? I think it's moving so fast. Yeah, no, like, of course, you'll see a few rats down there, but it's, like, they do a good job at making it very clean. They have a lot of worker trains that come, and they sweep off the tracks, and they have, like, vacuum trains, and it's, it's, it's pretty clean. Ooh, a That's vacuum a train. Like, that guy's, that guy's working, I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> that sounds cool, man. What what is like a just a train that they have and people with vacuums, or is it just like one big train with like vacuums on it? Yeah, it's like a yeah, it's one big train. It's like a super vacuum. Well, I can send you a link. Later Ooh, it's, it's, yeah, that sounds just cool. Just stop anything on the tracks. That's awesome. And believe it or yeah. not, they want to make those run uh, automatic as well too. Wow, that's so efficient. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For your haunted question, uh, yeah. No, <laughs> like I've heard rumors. Yeah. The base station, lower base station. Yeah. But <laughs> I haven't seen anything. Yeah, exactly. The only reason I asked that is because I heard the those same rumors that you're hearing. So I was like, since you're down there, maybe you've seen or heard some weird thing. Side, you heard, like, I actually heard a story where people were working down there and they heard, like, drums, like a, like a native drum beat, you know? And, like, howling. So I was like, oh, that's actually be great. But, uh, but yeah, man, look. Look out for that. You ever do try to get a pick if you get a good post that could happen? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> It's lower base station. That usually, people it's, it, it's kind of creepy when you're there. Yeah. It's not a station that's used a lot. It used to be used like in the 50s and 60s. But now yeah. it's just kind of a spare station they use to the yeah, transition they're doing some lines. They're doing some ghost stories from there. You've heard of that, right, Vic? Oh yeah, lower base like famous because uh, apparently a lot of like movie companies love to use that. I remember um, there was this like Master Chef event. And they were doing street food, and it was all in Lower Bay. Yeah, yeah. Lower, Bay. Lower Bay is known, known for, like, movie shoots and all that stuff. There you go. You see? I bet you even Drake probably did his music video down there, too. Oh, for sure, man. <laughs> you know, Lower Bay, <laughs> top of the CN Tower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, you know what? And uh, you know what it's called? 60 views. Most likely. Because, you know, all these things are used with six, right? Yeah. That's what they're all called right now. <laughs> but, yeah, guys, uh, good. thanks, Adam, for coming on. Um, we'll definitely have you on again. And uh, everyone sure. who's listening, be sure to check out Six Happening website. Check out our merch page. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, Matthew, thanks for coming out here and joining us. Uh, Ivan, again, it's been it's been awesome chatting with you guys. Uh, until the next one. Thanks for having me on.